You may think building a level in the void is impossible, but in this video, I'll prove you wrong. The further into the video, the more bizarre the levels get, so make sure to stick around. To begin, we need to get in the void in the first place. The solution? Using an orb that follows a player and a teleport portal beneath the ground. Now that we're in the ground, we have to build a level there somehow. One way we can do this is by editing the level save file directly, which would allow us to move objects directly into the void. It only works for individual objects. So, for example, if you wanted to move a whole structure, you'd have to move each object individually. And as you might have guessed, if I did that, I would just go insane. For that reason, I added a 500 object limit to force myself to save as many blocks as possible. But while this seemed like a good idea, it would come back to haunt me later on. But now that we got all the technical stuff out of the way, let's get to building. My plan for the first part was for there to be portals that flip through gravity every few seconds. But I quickly realized that I'd have to scrap that. This is because of how the ground works. For some reason, it's illegal if you're upside down, but completely fine if you're normal gravity. And don't worry, I have a plan for anyone who dares escape the ground. And for anyone who dares not subscribe. But seriously, if you're enjoying the video, consider subscribing. It helps out way more than you think. But I had an idea. I would have teleport portals that would teleport you further down every few seconds. However, one portal is two objects, which would take two years off my lifespan to place. So to cut down on objects, I use a pretty unknown feature. This is the multi-activate option, which well, allows you to activate things multiple times. Orbs have this feature, but portals don't. Thanks, Rautab. But if you thought that was gonna stop me, you'd be wrong. By manipulating the object's data, we can make it have the multi-activate option that works for everyone. And to keep the part more interesting, I decided to add portals that switch you between a cube and a robot. Not that it actually did anything, I just had to pretend like a new sink for once. Additionally, to avoid any skips, I added this spike for anyone trying to escape. His name is Theodore the Second, if you're wondering. What happened to the first, you may ask? Well, anyhow, this part would be nothing compared to the later ones in the video. My plan for the second part was to have H-blocks to your head against, and have them differ in size. But that's like hundreds of objects. So, to save objects, I decided to use spawn triggers. What's that, you may ask? A stupidly confusing trigger. Apart from that though, it allows you to loop triggers without having to copy paste hundreds for a single part. Win-win, right? Not exactly. Just like the gravity portals, they throw you into certain death. Why? I have no idea. But I do know that Raptop's coding is quite questionable. Luckily though, I got an even better idea for this part. The idea is that a player has to click a specific amount of times. Then a wall in front of them will disappear. And by stealing, I mean borrowing the triggers from a level, I had the setup complete. The way it works is by having a touch trigger that toggles a pickup trigger on and off, depending on if you're clicking or not. And after that, you can easily connect the setup to the walls by placing a few count triggers. Trust me, it's not as complex as it sounds. Just pretend it makes me look cool. But the thing I didn't account for was the thing that was about to happen next. For whatever reason, halfway into the part, the cube would randomly teleport above the ground. I spent 30 minutes looking for a solution, until I decided to scale up the blue portal, which solved the issue. I don't know how, but look, I'm not complaining. But this wasn't the end of it. During the part, the orb suddenly started making a run for it. It was sprinting at lightning speed, and I had no idea what I could possibly have done to upset the orb, but it was gone forever. I started falling, preparing for my certain death in the void. Without the orb, I was nothing. But just as I was about to die, I hit a platform. Little did I know I had just discovered a glitch that had been unknown to the community for years, even before the dinosaurs. Well, maybe not that far. But you get the point, you would think this was just a moving object that followed the player around, but there's no object in sight. What I had just discovered was a second ground in GD. The part even had entirely new physics due to the teleport portal, except you weren't even touching the blue portal. So like what? I was gonna make a few layouts that the gameplay would constantly loop between, just to save objects. However, I didn't believe that this would work in normal mode. So I simply decided to copy and paste two gameplay sections multiple times. But wouldn't you know, the gameplay had actually worked for once. Shocked, I asked a few people who knew a little too much about the game, but everyone was just confused. 
However, unlike the two previous gameplay parts, this is a lot more complex. So I needed a visual indicator. I could just copy and paste the gameplay onto the ground, but that would just spike up the object count. So what was my solution? Sorry mobile players. While you could see what the gameplay was now, you still couldn't see where on living earth your icon was. But I couldn't just have a fake icon on top of the ground, as it would follow the player. Normally this would be good, but we're literally in the ground, so it would be pointless. To compensate for not adding a placeholder icon, I ended up adding this line that showed a rough estimate of where you were. Just ignore the fact that I made a part that was Slaughterhouse difficulty in the middle of a 7 star. Here on the Cobb channel, it's only balanced gameplay. The gameplay is pretty fun though. That is if you enjoy putting yourself through torture playing invisible levels. Since my amazing gameplay would obviously get the level rated on its own, I decided to make the decoration simple. For the first part, I went with a bunch of spinning vortexes in the background, along with a circle that gets bigger for some variation. For the next part with toggling walls, I added a visual indicator for where the walls were at, as well as a counter that showed how bad I was at spamming. But with the object limit slowly creeping up, I decided to keep this part the same as the last. But don't worry, the last part will be much more interesting. For this part, I added this effect that kind of made it look like the object was glitching out. It was a nuke to the object count, but it looked nice, so I kept it. Not like anyone plays on mobile these days. Also, I added these mounds instead of using the previous background. It wasn't much, but it definitely spiced up the part a bit. Just ignore the fact that the level is 456 objects, but if I go missing, you'll probably know why. And with the level finished, I decided to show the level to a few of my friends, and see what their reactions were. And also, if this level gets rated somehow, and we also get 5,000 likes on the video, then I'll make a much harder sequel to this level. And Robtop, if you're watching this, please rate the void, I beg you. Hold the phone, hold the phone. You just teleport under the thing? How is the setup that fucking simple? There's no way. <laughs> what the fuck? Why are you clicking so much? You're in 10 CPS. The line is your cube. Yeah. It definitely just proves how broken Rotoff's code is. It, this game is held together with like glue. It's it's not well programmed. Bro, what? <laughs> I'm so confused. Bro, they gotta hire you as like one of those testers. Final thoughts. I think you need to go outside and touch some grass, bro. <laughs> the fact that this all was even possible just blows my mind. Like seriously. But this was only scratching the surface of glitches. You see, Geometry Dash is more broken than you think. These are Geometry Dash's most groundbreaking glitches. Trust me, some of the glitches I found break the game in the most extreme ways possible. So find out here.